Wow. So the Trump trucker protest in New York City could very well be going worldwide, guys. So this after former President Donald Trump himself endorsed it, saying Joe Biden's unfair and dangerous weaponization of law enforcement is a serious threat to diplomacy. Now, Infowars host Alex Jones, he also jumped in saying that the people have the power. And this just goes to show how trucker boycotts have become an increasingly popular idea on the right in the wake of the Freedom Convoy in Canada, in which a lot of truck in late 2021 through 2022 protested C-19 vaccine requirements for cross-border routes, eventually descending upon the capital city of Ottawa, Canada before being broken up. Some of the protests have actually taken place in some of the most unlikely countries, believe it or not. We saw the American Freedom Convoy of truckers in Washington, D.C. not too long ago making quite a ruckus out there. Six trucker convoys in France. And more importantly, there have been some successful trucker protests in Mexico. Mexico and in India. Now check this out guys. Truckers refuse to go to New York City for many different reasons, even if not specifically boycotting New York for Trump. Now, before I really get into this thing here, guys, all I ask is that you take a quick second, drop a quick like for the video. It's totally free. And if you really appreciate it, if you really want to support the channel, definitely share the video. I really, really appreciate you guys. So New York City has gotten itself into quite a mess. And this is really taking off, you guys. So we better stay ready. Stay tuned for all the information here. So like what Trump's attorney, Alina Hobbit, said in the recent interview, you. Show us that nobody is above the law. Check this out. The only person that is not, the only person who did nothing wrong but will still get persecuted and prosecuted is President Trump because they can't beat him in November. So I want to use their words against them and invite them to show me how no one is actually above the law because there are, there are people that we know have broken laws and we have not seen the system of justice be used the same for them as they are for President Trump. President Trump did nothing wrong. He's being persecuted. Show me the people that did real crime get persecuted well, and prosecuted. Some, so, I want to see that. So, so. I mean, she does have a point, you know, guys. Like, it does seem like nobody is above the law. Totally means, like, something else nowadays, right? Because how is Joe Biden and Hunter Biden getting away with all their dirt as evidence continues to mount up against them? And no one's above the law? Like, they already said that this is specifically against Trump and that no other businesses will be held to the same standard. So isn't this exactly what targeted persecution is? Like, that's why New York City truckers have been talking about stopping deliveries to the Big Apple in protests. Trump recently posted on his platform, Truth Social, how it was such an honor to have so many great patriots on the side of freedom and that Joe Biden's unfair and dangerous weaponization of law enforcement is a serious threat to democracy. Now, he ended the post with in his signature just basically saying, make America great again. Now, in addition to the imposing of the $355 million fine against Trump, Judge Arthur Arthur Organon, he banned the former president. He, he can't serve as an officer or a director of any New York corporation or pretty much any other legal entity in New York City or New York for a period of three years. And it's got people saying how New York's economy is already in the dumpster. They're trying to hand out thousand dollar debit cards to illegal migrants. And this is them just basically lighting the match. Now, at this point, the term boycott New York City or boycott NYC, it's been used around 13,000 posts on Twitter. Infowars and conspiracy theorist Alex Jones, he also got into the mix basically saying that truckers have the power and now it's time to use it. So go truckers, right? Of course, let's not forget about the GoFundMe campaign started by Elena Cardone, who is the wife of multimillionaire. Uh, he might even be a billionaire by now. Real estate businessman, Grant Cardone. And it's already doubled from the last time that I checked. So it's definitely climbing up there. So really, Trump protests, they're really picking up some steam. So trucker boycotts in particular have become an increasingly popular idea on the right in the wake of the Freedom Convoy in Canada. You you guys remember that, right? So Canada truckers in late 2021 through 2022, they basically came together. They protested for the COVID-19 vaccine requirements for the cross-border routes. A lot of people were getting, you know, either forced out of their jobs or if they want to keep their job, they had to basically, you know, get jabbed. So uh, this was a huge underpinning for why that was initiated. Well, it's been a while since then, but this movement is certainly alive and kicking with these protests basically taking place in some of the most unlikely countries. I mean, 
think Mexico, think India. Like, would you really think of trucker protests taking place there? More on that in a little bit, but if you guys are appreciating the content, definitely hit the like button. I really, really appreciate you guys. And, uh, and if you wanna see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. But even with police cracking down on the protesters in Ottawa, right? And limiting their access to fuel, international support for the truckers, it grew. With protests taking place from the UK and the Netherlands to the US, United States, and New Zealand. Now, we saw the Freedom Convoy in Washington, D.C. very recently. They organized six convoys in France, even in far-flung New Zealand, which, you know, mainly has been praised for its handling of the pandemic, hasn't really managed to be divided by the virus in the same way that a lot of other nations have. Supporters of the movement actually took to the streets to protest the C-19 restrictions. There have been actually some very similar movements in the U.K. with uh, Keir Starmer, the leader of the opposition, Labour Party, basically getting destroyed by a crowd of protesters before even being bundled into a police car to avoid the violence. More recently in Mexico, striking truck drivers blocked some key Mexican transport arteries, jamming some vital highways to protest the lawlessness on the roads that ultimately led to a rise of robberies and extortion out there. So traffic on at least nine highways was affected by the protests. Now, according to some of the local reports, uh, this is exactly what was happening there. Now, Rafael Ortiz, leader of the transport group Amotac, they told them that the strikes, actually more strikes, could be called if the government did not meet their demands. So the truckers are literally threatening the government to get what they want, which is justice here. And what else are they fighting for? Well, they're fighting for boosting security for truckers, noting that between one and two truck drivers are killed every single month on the roads due to a lack of safety. So that, as well as never-ending fees to, you know, transit certain highways and municipal tolls and, you know, for loading goods, you need this tag, you need that tag, you need this license, this permit, it's endless. And the truckers are getting destroyed out here. Now, in India, truck drivers protested against the recently implemented criminal code, which includes uh, highlighted penalties for hit and run cases. The new provisions have triggered strikes by drivers in several states in the country. Approximately 2,000 petroleum pumps faced fuel shortages as a result of all these truckers going on strike. So you can see what kind of impact the trucker protests can have on the country's economy, let alone a city like New York. Now, the Freedom Convoy in Canada, it really sent the country into like a state of emergency. They also affected the economic situation here in America. Traffic on the Ambassador Bridge, one of the most affected access points. It accounts for, you know, about a quarter of all of the cross-border trade between the United States and Canada with $360 million in trade per day, in addition to hundreds of millions of dollars in lost trade for each day that the border crossings were closed. And the supply chain disruptions, they made multiple goods in the United States more expensive over the months that followed. You remember inflation back then, right guys? Now, well, think about it, you know, it, it's still affecting us now. And a large part of that trade, it's tied to the auto sector. Canada, Canadian manufacturers produce parts essential for the production of vehicles, Ford, General Motors, GM, Toyota, all having announced to shut down or delay vehicle production due to the blockades. This kind of delays, you know, they were partly to blame for the inflation of the price of new cars and even used cars, if you think about it. In fact, the prices of other large U.S. imports from Canada, like snack foods, you got red meats, uh, vegetable oils, processed fruits, fresh vegetables, they were impacted as well. And if we even go beyond that, the latest impact of these protests, they've also raised fears that supply chains could be further disrupted by similar protests in major U.S. cities. I mean, we're seeing it now with this talk about trucker protests in New York City. Am I right? I mean, like imagine New York City grinding to a halt. Imagine hundreds of big rigs clogging the street, honking the horns and just saying, hey, we're, we're done. Now, I think this is a very unlikely scenario, but if truckers decided to just completely stop delivering to New York, New York would be shut down. And that is the potential reality of a trucker protest in the Big Apple. Because what a lot of people forget is that when a trucker protests by not delivering to New York City, it doesn't mean that the trucker is not going to make any money. They just don't have to drive to New York City. They don't have to drive to New York. Trucker can drive wherever he wants. As long as he has loads and can line up loads that go somewhere else and he makes a profit off of it. So first off, you know, getting into the morning commute, right? Gridlock. That would be an understatement. Uh, imagine trying to squeeze through a city 
already packed with cars now choke with slow moving giants all honking and causing some noise some serious noise pollution right deliveries they could screech to a halt leaving grocery store shelves and restaurants scrambling for ingredients i mean imagine the frustration the lost productivity i mean just chaos right and don't think it would stop with inconvenience prices would skyrocket you know with goods stuck in transit shortages would bloom your wallet would feel the pinch so just imagine paying an arm and a leg for that carton of milk or some fresh produce i mean we still remember how it was with you know toilet paper being out of stock forever right and the impact would not be confined to the five boroughs new york city is a major hub it's a vital cog in the national supply chain so a protest here it would send shockwaves throughout the country affecting businesses and consumers way beyond the city limits so imagine factories facing delays echoing across state lines the economic ripple effect could be significant leaving a, a bitter taste in our mouths to people who might not even know exactly what's happening in the big apple now protests they're a powerful tool for raising awareness and bringing about change but let's be honest guys they can also be a pain like imagine a national news filled with images of gridlock streets frustrated new yorkers and the potential for tempers to flare i mean not too long ago the canadian protests led to the u.s and canada auto plants curbing production and economists both further fanning inflation and and, and sapping up the growth look at toyota motor company general motors gm ford motor company Stellantis. They all curtailed shifts or production, had to deal with strikes either in Michigan or Ontario as Ottawa's protests pretty much dug in. And, you know, these offshoot protests just kind of like materialize across the country. Then you got Chicago Ray, the trucker influencer that pretty much kind of riled up the whole crowd about the New York City uh, protests. He claimed that 95% of truckers supported the former president. Now, I'm not really sure, you know, how many truckers are actually pro Trump versus how many truckers are maybe not necessarily pro-Trump. But before he took the post down, Chicago Ray's video got more than like 6 million views uh, and it got like more than 50,000 likes. Reports are even saying that several truckers were refusing to accept loads to New York City. Many of them have actually come out to issue, you know, threats that their protests could theoretically paralyze New York City. Now, as one New York trucker or as one trucker that typically drives to New York said, they're going to stand for Trump. And what they're hearing out there is that this thing is on. So anyway, uh, I wanted to just kind of give you guys that quick update. If you appreciate the videos, definitely hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see y'all on the next one.